All right, we are here at Gin Con with Bruno Cathala. Uh, first off, congratulations, uh, Spiel the Aris. Thank you very much. Yep. So let's let's start. Actually, let's discuss King Domino for a little bit. Yeah. Um, so it, of course, rave reviews, game of the year. Um, it's from Blue Orange. How did that relationship? Did you have the game fairly well developed, or did Blue Orange approach you with an idea? How did the idea of King Domino? How did that come about? So no, I, I'm not working with. Uh, with publisher coming f with f uh, to me with an ID, mm -hmm. so uh, I came to them with uh, f a finished game, mm -hmm. and uh, I had to convict them to uh, to produce it. Okay. Yeah. So like, did you have a lot of the art and everything? Did you search out those elements as well, or did someone help you find the art elements? How does how did that design process all come together then? So. Um, the relations between a game designer and a publisher is that uh, all the mechanisms are the responsibility of the game designer and all the artwork is the responsibility of the publisher because he pays for the art, mm -hmm. etc. And he knows exactly uh, what are his customers, so what uh, he wants, what image he will have with his uh, company. Mm -hmm. So he chooses the, the artist. Okay. But uh, I'm happy because with, for this game we had some discussion mm -hmm. and we agree to work um, uh, with this artist, mm -hmm. with Cyril Bouquet. Okay. And I f we thought both that it was the best way uh, to have uh, the design corresponding on the level of difficulty of a game. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So that's, so right now a lot of people are talking about that game. It's, it just came out. Do you, do you have a new game in the works that you're working on right now that you can tell us about? Or are you keeping that under wraps? What, what can we expect next? No, no, I can speak for okay. sure. <laughs> um, so for me the game has been released now not not one year ago, but mm -hmm. something like that, mm -hmm. and uh, I've played it a lot. Mm -hmm. And since that time, I've developed some more things mm -hmm. because I really love this way of playing dominoes. Mm -hmm. So I have two projects um, in the f in the pipe. Mm -hmm. First one is Queen Domino. Okay. Queen Domino will be released in SN this year, mm -hmm. and it's a uh, um, it's an expansion mm -hmm. for King Domino and also a standalone game. So that means you can play it by itself mm -hmm. or mix it with uh, King Domino. Uh, I have to say that it's a little more, more complicated than King Domino. Mm -hmm. uh, in a few words, the way you, s you select the dominoes and you connect them is exactly the same than in mm -hmm. King Domino. But you have a new color, which is the cities. Mm -hmm. And in the cities, you have no crown. That means that you will not score any points. Mm -hmm. But in the cities, you will spend money to build some specific buildings. Mm -hmm. And each building has its own way to get victory points. So it's a more strategic. Okay. And if you mix the two games together, you are able to play at four players. Mm -hmm. on a 7 by 7 grid, wow. which makes, in my opinion, the game more interesting mm -hmm. for gamers. And you can also have a s another game experience, that means that you could play up to 8 players by team, mm -hmm. that 2 against 2 against 2 against 2, and that means with your neighbor, you are building the same kingdom by 7 by 7 grid. Oh, wow. So. Yeah. That's really exciting. Yes. Uh, and for the people who think King Domino difficult enough, mm -hmm. I've designed a, just a small expansion, but which will be released only in spring next year. Mm -hmm. Much more easier for the one who will think that Queen Domino is too much for them. Okay. So it's kind of approaching the people who are like, this is a little easier, but then also Queen Domino for those who want it a bit harder. Exactly. That's, that's really cool. And I'm also thinking about kids, about small mm -hmm. kids. And I have an ID, but I need to work on it. It's not. Uh, it's not uh, finished yet. Mm -hmm. To make kid domino okay. for the three to five uh, gamers. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I have two nieces who are in that three to five age range. Yes. And so that'd be great because it's a game that I enjoy. Yeah. And saying, hey, here, take it to them and introduce them to some more yeah. more games along those lines. So that's where you're at now. Let's kind of go back to when you first got into game design. Were there any games that you played that made you go, I want to design games like this? Or what transitioned you from playing games to wanting to design games? Uh, in fact, I wanted to design games for a long time. Mm -hmm. I discovered that uh, modern games, I discovered that there was a life after Monopoly <laughs> when I was something like 
20 mm -hmm. uh, because of a French um, magazine dedicated to games, to board games, yeah. uh, speaking about games that I never see any f anywhere because mm -hmm. uh, close to my house there was no uh, a specialized uh, game shop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. I bought my first game by subscription. Mm -hmm. It was Fief, which is still released yeah. yet. Okay, and it was amazing to me mm -hmm. to play this game. I had so much fun. It was so different than the games for like Clue or Monopoly mm -hmm. or Risk that I was playing before. That I say yes, and I discovered that that game was published because the game designer won a game contest, mm -hmm. a game design contest. And when I was 20, I promised me that one day I will make my own game and I will have to be published. <laughs> But I had no idea what to do mm -hmm. <laughs> because at this time I didn't know anything about games. Mm -hmm. The only ideas I had was something like variant about chess because I was a chess player. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and I was sure that it was it had no interest in fact. Yeah. So during years I was only a gamer, but keeping in mind that one day maybe I will build my mm -hmm. own games. And it was only in 1999 that I began to work on my first personal design. Mm -hmm. Okay. So having played games, so starting with FIF and going on from there, a lot of people have what we call a grail game, or it's a game that I want, but it's really rare, or it's really old, or it's hard to come by. Are there any games that you don't have yet that you're just constantly hoping someday to add to your collection? Yeah. Or what, what are some of those grail games for you? There is one. Mm -hmm. It's Dune. <laughs> Because when, when, uh, when uh, it arrived on the French market, mm -hmm. uh, I was not winning much money and the mm -hmm. game was expensive, so uh, I didn't bought it. And now it's not no more release, yeah. and it's quite impossible to find. And I yeah. love the saga of Frank Herbert, mm -hmm. and I know that this game was good, yeah. and uh, I have not it. Uh, <laughs> maybe yes, I would really be happy to find it. Yeah, that's. I, I've talked to a lot of people who they mentioned that's one of those games where it needs a reprint. Like so, yeah. ma so many people want to get this game, and it's so hard to come by. Yes, but I think that it's not really possible to get a reprint mm -hmm. because I think there's problem with uh, the rights. In mm -hmm. fact, so yeah. I don't know exactly what is the problem. But uh, uh, if there were no problem, the game would have still been reprinted. Mm -hmm. In fact, yeah, and that's one of the things that we notice with a lot of IPs like that. It's it's hard to work with an established IP without getting the rights. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something. Yes. Yeah. So another thing is you do a lot of work with Days of Wonder. Yeah. Um, And so we're kind of looking at how how did you build that relationship that you did a lot of stuff with them? Is that you? Did you bring a first design to them, or how, what brought you to Days of Wonder as a company? Uh, first, I had a, a, a big chance. Is that that I met uh, Eric Hautemont, which uh, created uh, Days of Wonder before he created Days of Wonder. So he came in a game convention in, uh, in France, uh, an event created by Bruno Feduti. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the event, he asked to, to, uh, to speak just to uh, Bruno Feduti, Serge Laget and me. Wow. And he explained us that uh, maybe he wanted to create something in the business. And if yes, he would, he would like to work with us. Mm -hmm. uh, I was really surprised because uh, at that time, Uh, Bruno Feduti was really a well-known game designer mm -hmm. like Serge Laget and at this time I had only one prototype. <laughs> so I didn't understand why he wanted to speak to me, in mm -hmm. fact. And uh, I was not sure that it was someone serious, in fact, <laughs> because he said, I'm not sure that uh, I want to create a company or to buy a company mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, or to do nothing because there is no money to make mm -hmm. in that business. So. Uh, Then I came back home with his uh, professional card and I checked his name uh, on internet and he was named in a French uh, government report as an example of uh, French brain uh, going outside to, to work with other countries. So I say <laughs> maybe I have to follow this yeah. guy, yes. <laughs> yeah. And then the first games we made were without, uh, with directly with Bruno and Serge mm -hmm. and later we had the first collaboration with um, uh, Queen's Next Lace. Mm -hmm. And then with Serre Laget, with Shadows of a Camelot. And yeah. Shadows of a Camelot became quite successful, yeah. okay? And yes, uh, I think that we work very well together because we have a friendship relation mm -hmm. and a really professional relation. Mm -hmm. And we are very connected. It's easy to work together. It's easy to present our work. 
and uh, they like what I'm doing. I'm liking, I'm really liking how they are working. So that's the reason why we are really well connected. But uh, there is nothing more, in fact. No. And that's the thing we do. You do a lot of partnerships with various other designers. Yeah. Is that something that is there certain designers that you really want to work with, or do they approach you? How do you find those partnerships generally happen? Uh, it depends. In fact, uh, uh, sometimes, in fact, French designer, a lot of them, we are really well connected. That mm -hmm. we we meet very often, etc. And when you discuss with someone, there is a sparkling idea. The other one says something else and say, okay, maybe we will work together. So mm -hmm. this is quite spontaneous. Yeah. But now I'm older, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of young designer which say, which write me and say, hey, do you want to, to, to work with me? And uh, I always answer and I give advices. I don't want to, to, to take their work. Mm -hmm. And if I can help them to, to make better, better things, mm -hmm. I do it just yeah. for fun and friend, uh, friendly. Yeah. And sometimes they ask me to become co-designer of a game. And uh, if they think that uh, my input is sufficient enough, I accept with pleasure. Okay. Yeah, and that's where we've noticed, like Antoine Bowser, for example. You recently did, worked on was it Duels, I believe. Yes. With him. But um, but but the case is a little different because mm -hmm. <coughs> Antoine is younger than me, yeah. but it's still a well-known and recognized uh, game designer. So for this uh, specific uh, game, uh, it was maybe uh, four years ago or five mm -hmm. years ago. I don't remember exactly. We were flying. Mm -hmm. for Gen Con mm -hmm. uh, with Antoine in the same plane and he knew that at that time I had some difficulties with uh, money in fact because uh, uh, winning your life as a game designer is not that easy okay yeah. and he, uh, he said to me uh, hey um, I have an idea I would like to design to redesign mm -hmm. uh, Seven Wonders to make a specific two-player game mm -hmm. Would you really like to work with me? Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, if we are successful, you could get some money. <laughs> so he wanted to help me in one yeah. way and maybe to get my help because uh, it seems that I'm known for having something special mm -hmm. for games for two players. Yeah. And we worked together, it was really easy, and mm -hmm. yes, we made Seven yeah. Wonders Duel. Yeah. So it's always interesting seeing how different designers approach stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and especially you mentioned you have the tight-knit group of French designers. I'm sure you know you guys have various games that you guys like often get to play together, or is it more at cons you come together? Are there any certain games that when you're with these guys, you really want to get to the table, or are you usually playing your own prototypes? Uh, both, in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, f on my side, I have one playtesting session each week mm -hmm. with uh, people who are close to, to, to me, mm -hmm. but we also have meetings with uh, Ludovic Maublanc, mm -hmm. uh, Antoine Boza, Théo Rivière, sometimes Bruno Feduti, Serge Lager, mm -hmm. maybe something like uh, one time each month, of each two months, mm -hmm. and we play together all our prototypes. Okay. So, with um, connected people, with my, my, my most uh, friends, mm -hmm. and also with the other professionals. Yeah. And it's interesting to compare how things are doing. Yep. Awesome, well, thank you very much. Um, We'll let you get back to the party. Thanks for talking with us, and enjoy the rest of your Gen Con. It was a pleasure, and I just hope that my English was not too bad. <laughs> yep, I think it was great. It was very good.